Today I'll talk about HTML forms. I will implement this mockup of an account registration page where perhaps you want to contract somebody else's business and you have to fill out this form to sign up and create an account. So first thing I'm gonna do is create a directory in my file system for this project. So I'm gonna use the terminal, but feel free to use the graphical user interface, your file explorer. I'm here in the terminal, I'm gonna say mkdir to create a directory or make directory space. Let me call it account-registration. And then I'm going to use my text editor, in this case, Visual Studio Code, and open that directory. So a person just got here. We will implement this design here of a form to register an account. Maybe you want to sign up for some business service. I pasted the link to the Zoom chat for the mockup. And what I just did was go to my terminal, use the command KDIR to make a directory called account dash registration. Now I use a Visual Studio Code, the code command to open that. You can also do this using your graphical user interface. For example, here is where I was in the terminal. I can right click new folder or directory. I'm using Windows, so this is what it looks like. If it's on Mac, it's called Finder. In any case, this is the directory here. And let's go back. I'm going to go to my Visual Studio Code. This is what it looks like. There's no files yet. I'm going to start off by creating a file called index.html. In Visual Studio Code, I can right-click and choose New File. And here I can start typing the basic structure of HTML. Basically, we can do the doc type HTML like this. Just say we're using HTML5 and then HTML tag. Make sure to close it as well. Then we got the head, some metadata. Maybe I want a title here. Let's say account registration. This is the title that appears in the browser tab. Okay. And then outside the head, we write the body, and this is where we write the content for the form. Let's start off adding an H1, heading level one, that says account registration, so that we see something. Now, there are different ways you can run this. Uh, there you can run development server to serve this HTML file, or you can just open it in the browser. Uh, if you want, in Visual Studio Code, you can click to reveal file explorer and it should open that window that I had where I have my file that I just created here. I can right click and choose open with and choose the browser of your choice. I have many browsers. I'll do Firefox developer edition. That's the one I'm using right now. And I see this is the H1. Let me just share with you. All right, here's the so every time I make a change to the code, I will have to refresh this page. Usually there's an icon here, or you press Control R. Like I said, uh, the benefit of using a development server is that it will auto reload everything as you change the code. So if you know how to do that, feel free to do so. In any case, so just keep it simple and just use the browser and refresh whenever I make a change. Uh, is everybody okay so far? Were you able to create your index file? Oh, good. We This is a crucial step, so if you don't have the file. All right, so let's go to what we have to do. Let's start off. So we already got this heading. Now let's do the email. So for the email, it's going to be two things. First, we do the label. And then we do the input type text. Okay. Now, we're not using a lot of CSS here, but you can see the email label takes on its own line. 
if we do it in pure HTML, it probably will stick next to the input like this. So there are different ways if you just want to use HTML, you can put the label in a div and that should occupy the whole line. Otherwise, we got to use CSS and change the label to be a display block. In any case, let me go back to Visual Studio Code. Under the body, after the H1, if you can't see this well, let me know. I increased the font size. So first for the label, it's the label element. So open tag label and then close the tag. And between the open and close, you're going to type email. Okay, and then finally to make the text box in HTML, that's called the input element like this. And what's nice about input, it's that it's self-closing. That means you don't have to put a closing tag like we did for label. So you put just like this will appear with the text as we'll see. I save the file. I go to the browser and I refresh and you can see there's email label followed by the input type text on the same line. Now let's go back. Like I said, uh, a good practice whenever we have forms in HTML is to group each, uh, con each uh, control in a div like this. You make a div. Legiv div is a generic container, generic box. And we put the label and input inside. And this is the practice we usually do because we want to group every pair of label and input inside a div and the way we the reason we do that is we can easily style all of them uh, if we use the same class to this div in any case let's go back and focus on the input here i want this input to, i want to give an attribute to this so i can specify what kind of input this is because this element is kind of versatile it can take on many forms it could be a password email just generic text, it could be a date, it could be a telephone even. So let's specify an attribute. So go to the tag, the open tag, add a space to the right of its name and type. And I want it to be text between the quotes. That way I want to be specific. This is just a uh, text, but like I said, there's this is for email. So it's probably better if you choose the email one even though they're, they're kind of the same, they were just display text, but the email one has validation for the email. You know, email is usually uh, whatever, at, sign, some domain, and it does it for you with a built-in HTML validation. Okay, so another important thing you wanna add when you do forms in HTML is you wanna specify uh, the name for this uh, control because this data we got many different fields right going back to the mock-up so we got email we got password and all these choices tell us about yourself when we gather all this data what the user typed all of that is going to be grouped together into something that we will call the request so this request will be sent to the server and then it uh, needs to know what is what, right? Which one is the email? Which one is the password? Which one is the uh, tell us about yourself? So you got to specify a name for each input. So going back to Visual Studio Code, we're going to add an attribute called name to this input and we're going to give it a name. Obviously, we can call it email, but could be anything you want here, okay? It's just so that you, the backend, whoever receives the form information, will be able to distinguish between the different form uh, inputs that were provided. In this case, you want to be very descriptive, and it's very simple. It's just email, even though it's like the same as the type, but this could be anything you type, okay? All right, so... 
let's uh, make sh make the label uh, occupy its own line instead of saying line as the input. For that, I'll just add some s CSS uh, to the div that groups this. I'm going to add a class. I'll call it farm-group. Now, because we're adding a class, we need to define a CSS. Now, to do CSS, I must create a file here. I'll call it style.css. It could call it anything.css, okay? Now, in this file, I'm going to say dot because I want to target the element that has the class form-group. This is the selector, okay? And now we add the curly braces to define the style. Now, this form group, I want the only the label that's directly a child of this div. You see this label? I want to target that actually. So instead of just the form group here, I'm going to say greater than and then label. What I'm saying right now is if you see if you what's nice about Visual Studio Code is if I hover over this, it tells me what it means. So if you notice this part here, let me annotate here for you. See if we can do that. Oh, I can't. Anyway. You see element, class, form, group, and there's a label there because Visual Studio Code is telling us, what does this rule mean? Well, it means there's a label directly as a child of an element whose class is form group. And that's exactly what I want to style. Okay, if you're unsure what this means, just hover over it if you're using Visual Studio Code, although any modern IDE will probably have the same kind of functionality. So I want the display to be block. And this is a CSS property that will change the behavior of the label so that instead of being inline, that is, it allows something to be next to it, it will be a block, meaning it will push everything that's next to it to a new line. So once I save this style, I must link it to my HTML file. So going back to index.html, I am going to go locate my head tag. See the head and the closing of the head. I'm going to go to right before the closing of the head. And I'm going to add a link tag. So link like this. And then at the attribute, we want to specify as rel. And this is going to be what a style sheet. Now, let me do it like this. You can do it. See that? The, that's a nice thing for my Visual Studio Code. I can just type link and tab, press tab, and it auto-completes for me. But in any case, uh, the second attribute is where where is this style sheet? href, and I'm going to say style.css because that's the same file name here that I wrote. Now, this is a self-closing tag, meaning I don't need a closing tag, so it can just open like that. Now, that way I link this style sheet to this document. Let's check it out in the browser. If I go back and refresh, observe the email label there. Let me increase the font so you see it better. You see it went, it, it, uh, it's now taking over just the whole line. If I, if I right click that and click inspect, I can see the developer tools appear here. That's a very useful thing to debug. So I can highlight or click the label here. And you see, this is the style that's being applied on the right-hand side. Now I'm using Firefox, but if you're using Chromium-based, uh, the tab that we'll show here is called Elements. And on the right-hand side, there'll be Styles tab. Anyway, uh, you can see the display block here. And if I uncheck this, you can see the before and after this property being applied. So before, like this, they're on the same line. You can see if I hover my mouse over the label, it's in line, you see, next to the input. Now, if you want to find out, in my case, I'm Firefox, I can go to Computed, and I can filter by display and click to see the browser style. You can see the default display is in line. That's why it behaves that way. So going back to the styles or rules, I can... Mark it again, so now it's display block. Okay, so this is a way you can debug things through the dev tools. Okay, let's uh, close it. And you can type your email here.
and should be okay. Any questions so far? Okay, let's keep going. Going back to the mock-up, let's work on the password one. So this is going to be very similar to the email. So you can even try to get ahead of me, try it yourself. So it's basically the same pattern. We have a label and we have an input. In this case, we're gonna make some special uh, type there to be password so that the characters disappear or become just those stars. Okay, let's go back to Visual Studio Code. So we're gonna follow the same pattern. If you wanna get ahead, you can add the div, but just start small. Okay, first we need a label, so add a label. Close the tag and then between them, password. That's the label, great. Now let's do the input. Okay, this time it's input type password. And remember input is a very a versatile element. It can take on many forms if you change the attribute type. In this case, having it being a password type will hide the characters. And finally, let's add a names to distinguish this when we submit the form. Let's call it just password. Finally, let's group everything together in a div so that it can get the style that we define under the group form group class so that we control. You can see every single grouping will have the same kind of div with the class form group. And the reason that is great is because if I wanna change the style for each of them, I can just change it in one place. And that one place is under the form group class name. So in this case, when I add the div here, this input for the password will also add here to the style of having display block. So when we see it in visual, in the browser and refresh, it will also occupy its own line and push everything to the new line because it's a form group. It's under the form group. So see the form group greater than label there as well. So that's very convenient. Only one place to control them all instead of defining different classes or IDs for each one of them. Okay, this looks nice. Um, our mockup have some spacing between the controls groups that it's up to you to add them. If we were to add them with CSS, if we can just add a margin uh, to the bottom of every group, that's one option. Remember, I don't want to target things individually. I want to always want to go to the form group and try to do something there. So to me, it looks like each box that is the form has the class form group, we should add some space to the bottom so that the next one will not be as close. So if you want to use the dev tools to just have a feel of what it looks like visually, click the first one, for example, and you can see it's highlighting in the content there. That's the box. So I'm going to go to see this element thing. I'm going to click there and I'm going to say margin dash bottom. Now this is the property that adds uh, some margin or space to the bottom of this element. Let's start off one pixel and I'm going to press the up key in my keyboard. And you can see the space after it's increasing, right? If I hover over that, that, you see the yellow area is increasing, the more margin bottom I get. So you can tweak, press down arrow if you want less. Let's try, how about 16 seems okay. How about 12? Just choose the number that you think is right for you. I think it's nice to have 12, so I'm gonna copy this after highlighting it. And I'm going back to Visual Studio Code, my text editor. And I'm gonna to go to style.css. And here I'm gonna add a selector for dot form group class. And I'm gonna make the margin bottom 12 pixels for every element that has the form group class. If you don't know what this selector means, again, hover over it in Visual Studio Code and you can see it's saying, okay, this means an element whose class is form group. This is what it is targeting or selecting. In any case, save that, going back to the browser and refresh. And you can see 
there is a permanent space between each one of them. And if you right light click this pointer here in the dev tools open on the left, you can highlight anything on the page. I want to highlight this second one here, see if I can do it. Yeah, if I hover like outside here. See that box has uh, some margin bottom as well. So every one of them will have the margin bottom. So you don't have to do it individually, right? It's already done as long as you add a div with the class form group to the next set of inputs, it will always have the space. Okay, let's try to add a password. There you go, it's hidden. Going back to the mockup, there's a slight space between the label and the input, so we can tweak that as well. And you see, it's right here in the label. So we're gonna target a label. We already have the selector here. So all we have to do is go here and see what happens if I add maybe margin bottom again, maybe a little smaller, four. How about that? Add a slight space there. See it before, after, before, after. C controls all of them. So we're gonna take this, highlight and control C. Now, the reason I always do that is because the dev tools is not something permanent. If you refresh this, you're gonna lose that code. So we always gotta go back to our source code and add it there. Now we're targeting the label directly under the element with class form group. So we're gonna add it here. Okay, so that takes care of the space. With that, any questions so far? Okay, let's keep going. Back to the mockup. We did the email, password. Let's do this one. Now this one is a little bit different because as you notice the email and password, it's one liner, right? Only one line of text. This one has multiple, you see one, two, three, four. So this is a multi-line text input field. Now in HTML, this is not input. This is called a text area. So be careful with that. All right, text area is the element you want to use here. With that said, let's go to the code. So tell us about yourself, Laurie, or whatever, okay. Going back to index.html. We can just add the div again. Form group. Every time we make a form group, add a div with class, and then let's do it. Label. This is tell us about yourself. And then not input multi line text is text area, text area element. Now, this one is not self closing, so you got to close it, okay? Don't forget the closing tag. Like that. Now, make sure to add a name because we want to identify this. So let's call it, I don't know, biography. Save that. Going back to the browser and refreshing. This is what it looks like. And we can type two lines and then three and four. You can see there's a scrolling bar if you use your scrolling button in your mouse. So you can see this thing can expand if I click and hold. In any case, the default is like this, but we can change it. If we click to inspect, I can actually change the attributes in real time if I right click this, add it as HTML. And I wanna show you that to increase the number of rows by default, I can say the rows attribute, let's say five like this, and it in expands vertically, okay? So you can use that attribute to specify. We can do one, two, three, four, five rows shown initially. So let's use that. Remember, I did this, but I got to copy that back into my source code. So here I'm going to add the rows equals five to the tax area. Now let's make everything uh, add here to 
you see the 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 this this width is kind of off. You can see you can see the vertical line. Uh, in, in rel relative to the inputs previously, it's not on the same, right? So this would be more like here if we want to follow the same line, right? So we can adjust that by changing, uh, either make, one way is we can make every input in the form groups uh, take 100% of the width of the parent but then we control that by specifying a container for the whole thing. All right. And that's what we're going to do. Actually, I didn't tell you, but when you have a form in HTML, we have to enclose every single control in a bigger box that has the element form. So let's do that. So all of the form elements here back to Visual Studio Code. We must place them under the form tag. Open the form tag, put all your controls inside. I always like to add indentation that is spaces to the left so that visually I can see these are after the, the open form tag. And when I finish that, I put the closing form here and then the next one, the indentation would go back to the same level here. Instead of being here, it's there. In any case, now that we got everything in a form tag, this form tag has some attributes we can add to specify where the information is going to go. Now, there's two important ones. The first is the method. And this has to do with the way the information goes to a server. It goes through what's called the HTTP request, hypertext. Uh, let, me see, let me write it for you. HTTP. Hypertext transfer protocol. Okay. That's how the information gets sent. So it's either get or post usually. Now, if you put get for the form, it's not a good practice because the things will appear in the URL. I can demonstrate to you in a bit. So usually we want to do post. Okay, let me leave it get just so I can demonstrate that. And then we need an action attribute to say, okay, where is this going to go? Now I have like an example place where this is going to go, but actually this is not going to do anything, okay? But this URL here is just a, like a placeholder, a test server, but it doesn't do anything at all, okay? In the real world, it would take the information, do something, and give you a proper response. I paste that to the Zoom chat. It's just so we can have something. Uh, pl JSON placeholder, typicode.com, it's called what's an API that returns JSON, but we can also use it to uh, test this, even though it's not going to find a, this endpoint doesn't exist. It's just so we can see it working. In any case, I'm going to save this. I'm going to go to the browser and I refresh. Now you can see the form is here. Now watch this. I'm going to click the network tab in the dev tools. Oh, I need, I need some mid button actually. I cannot do it yet. We need the submit button. We'll go, go to the mockup, scroll down. You can see here this button create account. So I need that to trigger the sending of the form. So let's add that quickly so I can demonstrate the submission. So at, at, right before the closing tag for form, I will add an input type button. Oops, actually it's type submit it's a special one okay because when it's inside a form this will be the button that will be used to trigger the submission of the form so be careful input type submit now if you want to label for the input add the value create account now this is a self-closing tag so let's fine leave it like that now there are alternatives to this you're going to see also button type submit like this with the create account between the open and close tag. 
You can also use that as well, okay? But I'll just use uh, input like this. In any case, going back to the browser, refresh. Now I can see the button here, submit button. Let's see what happens when I click create account. But before that, let me type something for email. Hello, mail.com, then some password. I'm me. Watch the network tab and make sure the filter is all instead of anything else. You can see this, this shows us what requests were made when I click submit. So I can click the first one and this is showing me what happened here. So it's a get method to that place, right? JSON placeholder.tpcode.com slash test slash HTML dash forms. You can see what happened when I use the get. It adds the information to the URL. You see to the request URL here. You see question mark, then the name of the field, email. This comes from the name attribute, okay, of the input. And then equal sign the value, hello at mail.com. That's what I, I, I wrote. And ampersand to say and, Password, that's the password field, equal the value I typed, I typed password. And ampersand, biography equals I'm me. That's what I typed in the text area. Okay. You can get quick request. Uh, there's nothing here, but going back to headers. So this is not good, okay, to use get. The reason we don't use get is because of this. Like I just showed. The uh, going back here and do it again. The information that we typed, it's going to the URL, and in the server side, there's usually a logger that's always uh, printing stuff and recording the requests. Okay, think of it as a person rec or recording everything that's receiving. So it's going to record that, and imagine you're sending the password. That should be something sensitive. And the recorder is recording that in its log file, in its history. If anybody goes there, they're going to see it, all, pe all people's passwords. So you don't want to do that. That's why we don't use get. We use post. Okay? So remember that. So you want to change the method here for the form to be post. When it's post, all the information does not go to the URL in the URL, it goes to the body of the request, okay? And that's important because the body will not be logged by the server. Okay, enough of that. Uh, going back to the browser after doing post, I'm gonna try it again, click the browser back button, click create account, and now I wanna inspect this. Oh, actually I forgot to refresh, let me see. Let me make sure I saved it and refresh test. Okay, now it's doing post, nice. If I click this, I can click request. You see when it does post, I click request here, I click raw. It sends it in the body of the request payload and you can see the format is like this, always the name of the field equal sign and its value. Hello, percent 40 mail.com. Now, the reason you see percent 40 is because the at sign gets encoded. Encoded meaning the character is changed to another kind of symbol so that it can be sent because it's uh, the at sign is kind of a special thing. So they usually encode all these kind of characters. Uh, and, it can, and if you have more than one field, it's at is the ampersand and then name of the field equals password. And it's always like this format, okay? And if you notice, the space here has a plus. I, I said, I am, I'm space me. That got converted into a, a plus. Okay. So if I uncheck raw, this is what it looks like. In any case, that's the post request. Now let's go back to building the form. I'm going to click back here. Click close. Now the next thing, oh yeah, I was gonna talk about the style, right? But to make everything line up. So since we got the form tag here, I can actually do something about that. 
maybe I can enforce a specific width for the form and everything will uh, adjust accordingly. Let me show you what I mean. If I right click this input here and inspect, if I make its width 100%, it will take the whole line, right? The container, you see it's taking over that. Now I can control that if I go to the parent container that contains everything. That means the form here, see the form? I can actually adjust. What if the form width is maybe 300 pixels? You see what happened? It adjusted, it shrunk. So this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take that and control it with the parent form here. I can control whatever is inside. So I'm gonna make all of these form controls with 100% and then control it with the outer container that's the form. Now you might've noticed this thing, of, it's kind of going inside the box. It's probably due to some CSS property there. But in any case, let's go back to CSS style.css. So I'm gonna take this dot form group, the immediate input, make the width a hundred percent like that. And uh, there's also text area. So you also wanna do dot form group text area with a hundred percent. Okay, uh, notice I, I typed the same thing twice. So if you find yourself doing that, you could actually reuse this this block by just doing comma here like that. And then you don't repeat yourself. Now I need to target the form. So going back to index.html, uh, we can add a class or ID, it doesn't matter. Let's say it's a class registration dash form. Let's do account dash registration form. Save that, go back to styles. Let's add dot account registration. Oop, there's a typo. And make the width whatever we want. Maybe you want it to be 300. Uh, notice I put it before everything. It doesn't matter where I put it, okay? I can put it here. I can put it here. It doesn't matter, okay? Save that. Let's go to the browser. I'm gonna refresh. See what happened? Now everything is nicely aligned vertically the same way. That's the form. Nice. And let me see one thing here. I'm guessing, trying to see if that's the problem. Just trying to see this funny thing. I think it's because of the input having some, uh, if you look at computers here, layout, you can see there's some padding to the left and right, right? Is If you remove that, let's see what happens. Padding is zero. I'm just playing around to see why it's doing that thing. Yeah, seems to have been better a little bit. And then some border, oh, I see. So if border is zero, don't do this, okay? I'm just trying to see why it's not lining up. Okay, yeah, let me refresh. So the reason this form you can see the box, they're kind of going outside the box and so that's due to the border and the padding for the inputs. And I think you can change that if I'm not mistaken. If I do border, what is it, content size? Let me check here. Border box CSS, the property. Yeah, box sizing. Let me try that, box sizing. Something like that. That'll be for 
box sizing. Yeah, that's it. That's why it's doing that. See if I do box sizing border box. They uh, adhere to the thing. And this has to do with uh, when you look at widths, what is included in the width? You know, is border padding included in the width? If I change the width, does that include that? It's, it's It has to do with that. If you want to read more about it, look at box sizing property CSS. Okay. But if you want to fix this issue where it's going out, just use this. We can go and go back to the Visual Studio code. I think we did for text area. Here can add that box sizing border box. Okay. So we're going back to refresh and click the form. Now it's nicely within the box. Okay, let's uh, close the uh, tools. Any questions so far? All good. Let's try to speed it up because we're running out of time. So let's do which op option best describes you, like a question. And then there's like a radio. This means only one of them can be chosen, okay? Let's look at that. Go index before, after, tell us about yourself. Let's see here. What, which option best describes you? Which option best describes you? Now this one, technically, it could be a label. I don't want to make it a label because a label is usually associated with a control and an individual one. And this one has three separate options. So let me make just that a div. Yeah, I didn't talk about associated label with the input yet, but let's first do this. And then we're gonna do input type radio and then individual like this. Let's look at the browser. So it looks like that. You can see the checkbox, not checkbox, sorry, radio box was checked. So we repeat the same pattern for the other ones, uh, business and other, okay? So let's do it. So we're gonna do input type radio, business, and then repeat the same thing for other. Now you notice there's no line break there. You notice. Refresh. They're all in one line. See, if I click, and they're all clicking the same thing. So we're gonna fix that soon, but. We got to fix some bugs. So the first thing I want to do if I refresh, oops, it's still marking them. Let me open a new tab. Uh, if I click the word business, I want it to be checking this. If I click the word business, I want to check the radio to be selected. Let's fix that. To do that, we need to enclose the whole thing in a label. Okay, so I do like this. Label. And then at the end, a label. So I put the input radio with the business thing inside a label. Okay. And then refresh and you click the business word and voila, now it checks. Okay, so that's the trick here. Going back, just place a label, open the label here, then put the input and the individual and then close it open the label type the input in the order choice and then close the label okay and that should fix that
Now, another thing we want to do here, let's see. You can also put a div class form group. That's fine. Form group. And if you do that, uh, remember the labels will have some light space under them because of margin bottom. And they will be uh, display block, right? Remember that? Going back to the browser, you see that? What happened? So let's inspect each one. Because each of them is a label directly on the form group, they will get the style with display block, which makes them occupy the whole line and push the other one down. And then the margin bottom, which is a space slightly below it. So it looks a lot nicer than before. And you can see the form group is kind of like a central place to style everything, right? If which, as long as we add the class form group inside the outer div, everything gets styled nicely. So that's a very good benefit. Change it in only one place and everything else gets styled. Okay, nice. Now, this thing about clicking is messed up. And that's because I need to make them associate with the same thing. So let's go and fix that. So this is like what your option batch describes you. I don't know what to say. What, what can we call this? Plan? I don't know. Let's call it plan. Naming is hard. Uh, okay, go to the input. Radio, add a name. Let's say plan. And then you do the same for the others and add the same name. Plan. Okay. So add a name attribute to each input with the word plan. Plan. Going back, refresh. Now if I click, you see what's happening? Only one of them gets selected now. And that's because the radio is a user interface piece that you can only choose one option. When we have the, the same name attribute value for all of them, they will associate together. Meaning if I choose another one, it will uncheck this one and only check the other one. Okay, that's the radio. Okay, now let's look at the other one. There's a lot of space here. If you wanna touch the CSS up to you, now we're running out of time, so I wanna move fast. Now let's do the checkbox. Now the checkbox is different. You see the checkbox, we can check more than one. You can check one here, one here. Okay, it's multiple choice. So it's almost the same pattern, except the type is gonna be checkbox. Let's go and do that. How do you use this our service? How do you use our service? Let's do it. Uh, let's add a div class form group. Uh, div, how do you use our service? And then let's start just input, okay? Input type checkbox. Add a name here. Let's call it usage. Now this is going to be with a checkbox and then I have to type the whatever next to it. Let me see what it was. It was desktop app, mobile app, smart TV app. So desktop app. And then you put a label surrounding it so that you, if you click the word desktop app, it will also check it. Now you want to repeat this pattern twice, right? One, so I'm using my control shift, let me see, alt, yeah, alt shift down in my Visual Studio code. I use Windows that duplicates the line and I duplicate it two times. So I don't have to type it again to move fast. And then I change it to I think mobile app and the Last one, smart TV app. Now, one thing I didn't mention is, okay, how does it know what choice I'm picking? So I didn't, I didn't mention that. So we need to specify what's called a value attribute. 
because when I submit this, I don't know exactly what which one I picked. So we want to make sure to add a value attribute to, so to give it a unique identifier. So this one you can have maybe desktop. And then the second one will be mobile. And then the last one, you can just say TV. Save that. Now let's see what happens in the browser. I want to go here and refresh. You see this here? Let me check one, check the other. See it's multiple. You can check more than one. Now let me submit this form and see how this looks like in that format, submission format. Because I think there's a bug with the radio because I just mentioned the value attribute, right, for the input. So we got to fix that. Let me check the network tab, click create account with the all, go to this one. Let's verify the request here. I want to make it raw. Email is fine, password. And then, by, oh, the password, I didn't type anything, right? That's why it's empty. Biography. So I, I'm I'm looking at the usage, right? You can see here, it says usage equals mobile and ampersand usage equals TV. So it does this. It adds, if you add, select multiple, it adds each one of them like this. And you can see there's multiple, same name here. I don't know if it's too small for you. Let's increase that. So that that's fine, okay? That's how it appears. But the plan, it's a bit weird. Let me go back and select business for the plan. Um, then submit. Because I think there's a bug there. You see, the plan is always on. That's wrong, right? Submitted business. So that's why we've got to specify the value. Otherwise, this thing will be bugged. That is, has a problem. Going back to Visual Studio Code, for all these radios, you want to specify its unique value here, attribute. This one, let's say individual, like this. And the other one is business. Notice that this label that I typed next to it, it doesn't matter. It's, it, it's not going to show up in the submission. So you have to type the value here. Okay, so don't forget. Going back to the browser, going back. But land's supposed to be off when inspected. Which one? What do you mean? See that? That. Now let's try selecting business again. Click the network tab, create account. I want to verify in the request raw that, oh, now it's plan business. See this one? Plan equals business. So now it's correct. Going back, individual, select create account, verify the request raw. You see now it's individual plan. Okay. Now, if you don't like this raw, you can always see the live format. And the live format is much nicer to see. And you can see there, the plan is individual, right? And you can see the usage is multiple ones because it's an array. So you're gonna see mobile and TV. So going back, if I pick other and then desktop and smart TV and click create account, let's verify that the request is correct. We got plan other, that's correct. And got usage, desktop and TV in a list because it's multiple things. You see, that's correct. So all this is gonna be submitted to a server and they will know right away what each of these things mean because there's a label here, right? A property name, email. Oh, that's the email. Oh, password, that's the password. Oh, this is the plan. Oh, this is the list of usage options that were picked. Okay, it's very important we verify that the request is being sent properly. It, and that's only going to happen when we have the right HTML attributes correctly set. So it's important that we have a name 
for every input control, right? Be it input, text, area, or whatever, have it a name. And then have, in the case of either radio or checkbox, you have to have a value for each of the choices. Otherwise, the server doesn't know what you pick. So make sure to add a value there. And because they're all associated together as a group, right? You have to make them have the same name. Otherwise, they will be considered in different groups. So you got weird things like the behavior we saw where the radio, it could be, all of them could be selected at once, but that's not true. We can only select one of them. So make sure they have the same name for that behavior to happen. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, I'm going to move really fast because I don't want to drag this for more. So how many user seats will we need? This is just an input type number, very simple. How many user seats will you need? Let's go here. How many user seats will you need? We can make that a label. And we can have an input here. Type number, okay? Not text. I've, it could be text, but number is better. This is just one, two, three, four, five, so on. Make a div, form group, class, enclose the label and the input, and that's it. Now, one thing I did talk about is associating the label with the input. Let's talk about that in a moment. So see how many uses each way we need. I can type a number here, increase with the up arrow, down arrow, decrease. Firefox might behave a little bit different from Chrome, but it's pretty much the same. I think in Firefox, I could type a letter, which doesn't make sense, but in Chrome, it doesn't allow you to type a letter. In any case, one thing I want to point out is, oh, see, when I click that, it focuses, right? See the outline? This is called a focus that we can type. Now, if I click this label, see, I'm clicking it. Nothing happens. It just highlights it. I want this to click that and highlight and focus this. Now to do that, we have to associate the label with the input. It's very easy, okay? See the input here, give it an ID. Let's say uh, account registration form dash use, use just seats. How about that? You can give anything you want, just make it a unique, okay? So I'm gonna copy that. Now for the layer, we're gonna say four and then paste that ID, okay? Take the ID of the input and make it the value of the four attribute of the label. That way this label will be associated with this input. Now let's check it out. Refresh. I'm gonna click this label. See what happened? It focused my input. Let me click outside and try it again. Click the label. Now I focus this so I can type. Okay, that's a nice thing. You can do that for email, password, and the text area here. Just make the same pattern. Give the input an ID, and then make that ID the uh, val the four the value of the four attribute of the label. If I do that quickly, just so you know, going back here. Okay, input for the email. Let's get it. Found registration form dash email. And then label for account registration form dash email, like that. Then repeat for password, right? Same thing. Give it an ID. Let's type it password. And then go to the label for same thing. Do the same for the text area, ID. Let's call this, what is it, biography? And then label four, count registration form, biography. Okay. I know I went a little bit too fast, but you got the point. Going back to the browser to test it out. Oops, refresh, click email, focused. Click password, focused. Click tell us about yourself, focused. Okay, that's nice feature to have.
Let's go back here. Oh, we got a date now. When should the service start? Let's do that. So that's going to be input type date. After the seats, make a div, class, form group. Label for, we can do account registration form. Let's call it, what is it? Start date. Start. Let's call it just start. Dash date. When should the servers start? So I put a label here. When should the server start? I put the four already here because I'm going to give the ID for the input. So I input. Then get the ID, which is the same as the four. So that thing is we just did is implemented. Now this is going to be input type date. So it becomes a date picker. And you want to give it a name, right? Let's give it start dash date. Let's check it out. Refresh. You can see now when should the stir start date? Click there, focus. You can either type, right, to what's the date today? Or you can click this calendar and pick. All right. You can pick year, month. Click there again. It'll probably look different on Chrome. Okay, but you get the point, right? You can click here and it will change there. So that's the EPA type date. And then going back to the mockup, finally, let's do these two checkboxes. So it's pretty much a checkbox here, okay? I have a read and agree to the terms. Have a, I agree to submit registration, registration electronically. Let's do that. So... Do it. So we have input type checkbox. And then we got I have read and agree to the terms of service. To the terms of service. And then you add a label surrounding everything. Oops, forgot the L. Label. And then do the other one the same way. I can just do it like that. Duplicate with shift, alt, down arrow. And this will say, I agree to submit my registration. I agree to submit my registration electronically. I think, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's, give it a name, right? Let's make sure to give it a name. Let's call it what? I have read agree terms, agree to terms, how about that? And then the other one is agree to submit my resignate registration. Name is agree to electronic, how about that? All right, so in this case, let me see. You can either group them together, that's fine, with the same name, or you can have different names. I think that should be fine too. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah, and the, and the value is, is either, let's see, name and then some value. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, because this one will be on... Like I will, I remember what you were saying about on. Oh, okay, okay. Let's 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 check it out. This one a little bit. Oh, let's add the form group too. Going back here because it's all messed up in the CSS. So let's add a div class form group. Oops, there we go. Form group added there. Okay, now it's one line each. Now let, let me mark one of them and see what happens in the dev tools, okay? I marked the first one only. 
And I'm going to verify the request. Yeah, agreed to terms is on. And the other one doesn't even show up. Okay. So that seems what happened when you don't have the value. It will just use the name, agree to terms, and check. If it's checked, it's on. And if you don't have it checked, it will just not appear at all. Okay, so that 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 seems to okay in this case. All right, so yeah. If I check the other one, it appears on. And if I don't check, this doesn't appear at all. And I think that's it for the thing. If you want to make this button matter, add a whiff. 100%, that would be maybe nicer. And add some styling, CSS. That would be nice. Let's see if I go just to finish it off. CSS dot form dash group. So we had an input, right? Directly input. Oh yeah, if you want to target input type submit, I think you can do it like this. Let me try. No, that doesn't seem. Let me see. CSS selector attribute. Thought you could do that. Form group directly input type submit. That's what we got, right? Type submit with 100%. Oh, is it because the quotes, double quotes instead? No. In any case, I thought that could work. No, it's not working. Input type submit directly under the form. Oh, it's because it's a form. I'm sorry. Not the form group. The input is not inside the form group, right? That's why it's not working. This input is not inside the form group. It's inside the form. That's what I meant. This form element. So put a form element there. That way is now. Okay, now it's working. Let's go. Here it is. If you inspect that, now it's appearing here. There you go. Now it's the button is up. It's hundred percent width. And I think that's it. That's the end.